Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I will, uh, I will start with a recap of our discussions, including our assessment of the outlook for the economy and the judgments we, we made in our, about our interest rate policy and our balance sheet. I will cover the decisions we made today, as well as our ongoing discussions of matters on which we expect to make decisions in coming meetings. My colleagues and I have one overarching goal, to sustain the economic expansion with a strong job market and stable prices for the benefit of the American people. The U.S. economy is in a good place, and we will continue to use our monetary policy tools to help keep it there. The jobs picture continues to be strong, with the unemployment rate near historic lows and with stronger wage gains. Inflation remains near our 2% goal. We continue to expect that the American economy will grow at a solid pace in 2019, although likely slower than the very strong pace of 2018. We believe that our current policy stance is appropriate at this time. Despite this positive outlook, over the past few months, we have seen some cross-currents and conflicting signals about the outlook. Growth has slowed in some major foreign economies, particularly China and Europe. There is elevated uncertainty around several unresolved government policy issues, including Brexit, ongoing trade negotiations, and the effects from the partial government shutdown in the United States. Financial conditions tightened considerably late in 2018 and remain less supportive of growth than they were earlier in 2018. And while most of the incoming domestic economic data have been solid, some surveys of business and consumer sentiment have moved lower, giving reason for caution. We always emphasize that our policies are data dependent. In other words, as economic conditions and the outlook evolve, we take that new information into account in setting our policies. We are now facing a somewhat contradictory picture of generally strong U.S. macroeconomic performance alongside growing evidence of cross currents. At such times, common sense risk management suggests patiently awaiting greater clarity, an approach that has served policymakers well in the past. With that in mind, I'd like to spell out how the Federal Open Market Committee has been thinking about these issues. At our December meeting, we noted the solid outlook for steady growth, vigorous job creation, and price stability. We also stressed that the extent and timing of any rate increases were uncertain and would depend on incoming data and the evolving outlook. We therefore said that we would be paying close attention to global economic and financial developments and assessing their implications for the economic outlook. Today, the FOMC decided that the cumulative effects of those developments over the last several months warrant a patient wait-and-see approach regarding future policy changes. In particular, our statement today says, in light of global economic and financial developments and muted inflation pressures, the committee will be patient as it determines what future adjustment, adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate may be appropriate. This change was not driven by a major shift in the baseline outlook for the economy. Like many forecasters, we still see sustained expansion of economic activity, strong labor market conditions, and inflation near 2% as the likeliest case. But the cross currents I mentioned suggest the risk of a less favorable outlook. In addition, the case for raising rates has weakened somewhat. The traditional case for rate increases is to protect the economy from risks that arise when rates are too low for too long, particularly, particularly the risk of too high inflation. Over the past few months, that risk appears to have diminished. Inflation readings have been muted, and the recent drop in oil prices is likely to push headline inflation lower still in coming months. Further, as we noted in our post-meeting statement, while survey-based measures of inflation expectations have been stable, financial market measures of inflation compensation have moved lower. Similarly, the, balance, the risk of financial imbalances appears to have receded as a number of indicators that showed elevated levels of financial risk appetite last fall have moved closer to historical norms. In this environment, we believe we can best support the economy by being patient in evaluating the outlook before making any future adjustment to policy. <laughs> 